Good evening to everyone and welcome to today's wonderful evening with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. Preventive medicine. So we have touched based some of the um, essential topics in epidemiology, including case control trial, odds ratio, relative risk, attributable risk, etc., etc. So now we are with infectious diseases, which is a common topic between uh, microbiology, preventive medicine, pediatrics, and general medicine. So with that, let's make the great beginning. Good to see five online classmates. Uh, great if you can be able to punch whether the voice is loud and clear, please check. So, doctor, we are with typhoid fever, salmonella. So, man, cases and carriers, they are the reservoir of infection of typhoid fever. Who are convalescent carriers, typically? the people who are in convalescence after the disease subsided, they're recovering, convalescence phase, they're carriers. And they can be able to excrete for a period of six to eight weeks, is what you need to remember. Chronic carriers are those who excrete the salmonella typhi in the feces for more than one year after the clinical attack you call chronic carriers. And who is the source of infection if I get infected with salmonella? It is the feces, urine of the cases and carriers is the primary source. Whereas the water, food, fingers, flies, they are the secondary source is what you need to understand. So what is the incubation period? Of course, our classical traditional 10 to 14 days for the typhoid. In typhoid, what type of diarrhea you get? You know, these microbiologists are all hungry fellows. Everything they imagine with the food. Somebody says, cholera is a rice water stool. Typhoid is a pea soup diarrhea. Then splenomegaly. Very important feature is relative bradycardia. What is the meaning of it? Whenever you have fever, for every degree of temperature rise, there is an increase in the pulse rate by about 10. So if it doesn't increase, even though fever is high, that's called a relative. It is not actual bradycardia. In spite of rise of temperature, still your, temp your pulse is remaining the same. Relative bradycardia. Dichrotic pulse, abdominal distension, tenderness, and these are called rose spots. These are called rose-colored spots, which are the feature of typhoid is what you need to remember. So, shortly we are going to give you the Incas chatbot. In the Incas chatbot, it will ask you, how do you want to make a revision? I want to solve MCQs or do you want to revise high yield facts? If you say, I want to revise MCQs, then it will ask you, the bot will ask you, which subject do you want to revise out of 19 subjects? And how many questions in each subject are there? And how many you solved earlier? It will show you. So you have chosen a question, a uh, subject. Then it will start throwing you the questions. And it will ask you, you want to solve new questions? Are old questions which you have done wrongs are a combination of the two. So one of it you selected. Then it will start throwing you questions. If you have done right, you will get a GIF which will say, wow. If you have done wrong, there will be a GIF which will come and say, oh, don't worry, you have done wrong. And it will tell how many times you have done this wrong. What percentage of the people done this wrong? 
and the, among the people who did uh, solve this question how many thought answer a b c d so that will make you understand where i am going wrong then it will tell it will give you the explanatory answer for that for you to revise now i am adding one more feature for every question i am asking to create one audio explanation or a video explanation or a youtube link which is relevant to that or a image link in the google images relevant to that so that you will be able to see that then you can go to the next question like that it will make you play 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 and uh, unknowingly you will be practicing 5 600 questions every day instead of passively sitting and solving it in the book that's a point so intestinal perforation when is it a complication of typhoid fever patient has completely recovered from the typhoid but in the third week you get intestinal perforation now one very important fact you need to know is intestinal perforation whenever it occur normal in a normal person peptic ulcer is there intestinal perforation is there then peritonitis will not happen but with typhoid if there is a intestinal perforation there is a peritonitis and sepsis why because if you take the gut if there is any hole in the gut right what is overlying the gut you have the mesentery right the moment there is any perforation peptic ulcer and all they can cause perforation there is a localized paralytic ileus local segment of the gut become immobile normally the overlying mesentery's movements in the abdomen are because of the underlying gut's movements so the remaining part of the gut will be moving that perforated part of the intestine will not move so what will happen to the mesentery overlying it it will not move and it will seal the perforation do you follow me there is a hole the overlying mesentery is there the remaining part of the gut is moving the mesentery also is moving but that part where there is a hole localized paralytic ileus is there and that overlying uh, peritoneum will mesentery will seal it so then you don't get peritonitis whereas if you take typhoid it does not have that localized ileus because of that what happens there is no mesentery to seal it hence peritonitis occurs so this is a very important point you need to know most important to know is it is the third week one of the favorite mcq of the examiner doctor please don't forget third week good to see pramod gujjar and many more who are all online very good thanks for coming to the session third week please don't forget tomorrow's entrance they will ask this question you'll remember me then how do you do laboratory diagnosis of typhoid you should remember the mnemonic basu first week you use blood culture second week you use vidal test antibodies third week you do stool culture fourth week you will do urine test but uh, have you seen the reports given by so many tom dick and harry labs one day fever will be there they will give in they will give vidal positive right so that is the whole problem now what is the drug of choice for typhoid in the case of the cases cephalosporin ceftriaxone quinolones carriers how do you treat ampicillin amoxicillin plus probenecid for 6 weeks is the drug of choice for the typhoid is what you need to remember now typhoidal vaccine it's a live oral typhoid vaccine one capsule each on day 135 booster on three doses once every 3 years 
one day covid vaccine also oral will come that's our hope so one capsule each on one day 135 booster three doses once every three years protection duration the the duration of protection whenever um, um, you give the live vaccine is for three years that's what you need to remember this is all numerical that be numericals but there is no other way you need to bookmark and revise in the last moment typhim vi vaccine which is flagellar vaccine contains the vi polysaccharide so the salmonella typhi house flagella so vi is flagellar vaccine flagellar polysaccharide vaccine single dose imr subcutaneous not given in the age less than 2 years is what you need to remember then comes tab vaccine it contains salmonella typhi paratyphi a and paratyphi b is what you need to remember that is all the story on typhoid at least 8 to 10 points you need to remember for psm guinea worm disease it is eradicated still not in entrance exam in entrance exam it is still alive so last case in india was in july 1996 in jodhpur rajasthan india certified the elimination of the guinea worm in feb 2000 and guinea worm disease free india declared in feb 2001 is what you need to remember so who is the reservoir of guinea worm there is no animal reservoir a infected person himself is reservoir of the guinea worm is what you need to know so how is it transmitted it is the water containing the cyclops which is containing the infective stage of the parasite in the mode of transmission guinea worm why we are able to eradicate what are the things about it epidemiologically that enabled us to eradicate we provided safe drinking water we controlled cyclops we gave health education and active surveillance for cases was run that helped us to eradicate it now doctor how do you treat guinea worm so guinea worm is eradicated niridazole bebendazole metadazole are the treatment of guinea worm you can treat a guinea worm but none of these drugs can prevent the transmission you can treat the guinea worm of an individual but you can't give any of these drugs for the mass treatment these are the two points that you need to remember now doctor the most common helminthic infection of the human beings is round worm round worm ascaris lumbricoides actually there are so many worms guinea worm round worm hook worm tape worm you need to be very clear which worm is what right dracunculus medinensis is guinea worm ascaris lumbricoides is round worm so the most common worm infestation in india once more your answer is round worm i still remember ditto ditto same picture when i was in internship there was one uh, tribal uh, person in emergency brought and uh, during the laparotomy full noodles ascaris lumbricoid noodles right so our uh, professor used to be a very funny guy do you like to have a noodle huh <laughs> so round bomb ascariasis so for the round bomb man is the reservoir of infection and the mode of transmission is feco oral incubation period is 2 months and what is the drug of choice albendazole mebendazole and pyrantel pomegranate is considered to be the treatment now comes hookworm hookworm is ancylostomiasis 
It is caused by two agents. One is ancylostoma deodinin, other is nicator americanus. Is what you need to remember. Once more, reservoir is man, and how is it transmitted? Direct penetration of the skin, of the foot, and also even by oral route. Five weeks to nine months incubation period for ancylostoma deodinin. Seven weeks for nicator. Americanus. What are the other names for hookworm? Miner's anemia. Hookworm is a blood sucker. So, miner's anemia, tunnel disease, brickmaker's anemia, Egyptian chlorosis, they're all the names given for the hookworm infection, is what you need to remember. And what is the average blood loss? 0 0.03 to 0 0.2 ml per worm per day. So, iron deficiency, hypoalbuminemia. The, the two things which are associated with hookworm is what you need to remember. Now, cutaneous larva migrants, basically it is a skin disease in humans because the larvae of the various nematodes. But the most common is ancylostoma brasiliense. Lead to cutaneous larva migrants is what you need to Remember. So, what is the drug of choice for the hookworm? Albendazole for Ascaris, sorry, not hookworm, um, for the, yeah, right. So, what is the treatment? Uh, Encylostoma deodinale is albendazole. Nicator americanus is mebendazole. Once more, this is a favorite asked question. M for N, A for A. Albendazole for ancylostoma. Deodinale is what you need to remember. So now for the hookworm, you have an endemic index. Very good to see six online students with zero marketing. So you please uh, try to help to get our people your uh, junior numbers so that uh, our people will call and then uh, tell them that we have a session happening here, right? So, Chandler's index is the endemic index. Now, what is Chandler's index? It is the number of hookworm X per one gram of stool is what you need to remember. Once more, there are some dirty numbers. Less than 200, no significance. 200 to 250, potential danger. 250 to 300, minor public health. More than 300 is major health problem. Is what you need to remember. And what is that technique called as for Chandler's index? Cato cards technique. Cato cards technique is used for. Uh, collecting and calculating the number of X per gram of stool of hookworm. Next comes tapeworm. Tape hota hai tinea. So you have tinea solium, tinea sejineta. So for the tinea solium, the definitive host is man. Intermediate host is pig. Tinea sejineta Man is definitive host where first night occur, sexual reproduction occur in man. Asexual, wherever it happens, it is the intermediate host. So cattle is intermediate host for sejinator. So how is tape form transmitted, doctor? Infective cysticerci is ingested in the beef in case of sejinator. Or in the pork in tinea solia. Even ingestion of the food, water, or vegetables contaminated with the X will also lead to transmission. So that is the reason I still remember uh, the first case of cysticercosis I have seen was Venkata Raghava Sharma who is an absolute vegetarian. I was thinking, pork khai to aega na, isko kaise aagaya, cysticercosis, isko kaise aagaya, isko kaise aagaya. Then we guys, 
opened the book and then read the whole thing in Harrison transmission. Then this sentence we were always missing that it is the X that are there on the banana and Venkata Raghava Sharma was eating that egg infested banana that made him to ultimately get Sishti Sarkosis. So you need not be pork eating guy in order to get Sishti Sarkosis. That's the point you need to appreciate. So what is incubation period of tapeworm? 8 to 14 weeks. And what is the drug of choice for tapeworm? Praziquantel niclosamide and especially for Sishti Sarkosis, albendazole is what you need to remember. All right, doctor. Now comes dengue fever. Dengue is what? Arbovirus belonging to the family of flavivirus. Dengue can cause asymptomatic infection, dengue, dengue hemorrhagic fever, dengue shock syndrome are the four different manifestations. How many serotypes? One, two, three, four. Four serotypes. And who is the vector? Aedes aegyptiae. Don't go innocently and say Culex in the entrance. And then tell, I took coaching from Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. After that, I started believing it is Culex, not Aedes. So, Sardi ke liye, agar dawa liye to, teen din nai liye to, do din pe kam hota. Sometimes, to not taking coaching is the easiest way to get seated. But not with Murli Bharadwaj. Don't worry. So, all this uh, dirty stuff to study in the textbook, boring job, right? So, you attend one hour with me means I am saving you at least six hours of time. So, don't make any other notes. This is the only notes. Play with the chatbot. There are about 40,000 MCQs. Actually, I thought it will be 50,000, but it is running only 40,000 questions. With the explanatory answers are getting ready. Another two, three days may chatbot will be fully pregnant with questions and high yield facts. High yield facts as and when as I keep preparing and then we upload. Right? Huh. So your preparation will become uh, mobile. Anywhere you can sit and then keep uh, doing the revision. And uh, as the assistant, it will store what facts, what questions need to be bookmarked for your last moment revision. Finish. And those points which you are constantly feeling uh, confused and want to find some easy method for discussion, those facts we will sit and discuss. I mean, questions. All right? But there will be no such questions in medical. It is not like physics maths. Right? Uh, you know, at least the most important thing is you should know that you, sh you don't know. If you know that you don't know, the journey of cracking entrance is half done. Because in this big ocean, what you know, what you don't know, first need to be sorted out. Out of what you don't know, what you are bound to forget also, you should sort out. And what you are bound to forget, but definitely tested by examiner, you need to store at one place and revise. Simple. You will crack the exam. Right? If this simple trick, if the people don't know, They'll be struggling, struggling, struggling to become a topper, but nowhere they will end. Incubation period is dengue, five to six days. Classical dengue fever. What is the other name given, doctor? Break bone fever. There'll be such a severe pain. Break bone, as such bone is broken, fever. And you get a rash like this in dengue. So, classical dengue fever, how does it present? High grade fever which shows a biphasic curve, chills, intense headache, muscle and joint pains, retroorbital pain, photophobia, colicky pain, abdominal tenderness, and skin rash. And what is the type of rash? Whenever you are in acute stage, there is a blanching rash. And the rash that forms during the recovery from the dengue has got classical islands. Can you see the islands? Islands, islands, islands of white in the sea of red. 
islands of white in the sea of red and this is highly potential image based mcq in the tomorrow's exam doctor dengue hemorrhagic fever is the severe most form of dengue fever so dengue dengue uh, classical dengue fever now we are talking about the dengue hemorrhagic fever incubation period 4 to 6 days most severe form and more than one dengue virus type lead to the development of dengue hemorrhagic fever is what you need to remember so there is a rash but rash is less common in hemorrhagic fever rash is more common in classical dengue fever and uh, in the dengue hematocrit start increasing more than 20% baseline why because dengue will cause the capillaries become leaky and all the plasma will leak out of the capillaries so what is uh, hematocrit rbc count divided by the plasma volume so the moment plasma volume decreases the hematocrit will increase more than 20% that is the feature of dengue hemorrhagic fever there is moderate to marked thrombocytopenia less than 1 lakh and hepatomegaly so these are the features of dengue hemorrhagic fever and what is very important test it's called positive tourniquet test you tie a tourniquet then because of thrombocytopenia petechiae will form more than 20 petechiae so this is a normal hand this is a tourniquet hand more than 20 petechiae per square inch is a positive tourniquet test which you find in the case of the dengue hemorrhagic fever is what you need to remember so how do you diagnose fever with hemorrhagic manifestations plus thrombocytopenia with the hematocrit which is raised more than 20% that defines the dengue hemorrhagic fever is what you need to remember then what is dengue shock syndrome if this hemorrhagic fever is added upon with the shock how do you define shock a rapid weak pulse a narrow pulse pressure less than 20 mm mercury what is pulse pressure systolic minus diastolic similarly hypotension cold clammy skin restlessness plus uh yellow tinge it's also called yellow jack black vomit american plague there are the different names that have been given for the dengue shock syndrome is what you need to remember now comes the yellow fever yellow fever yellow fever is caused by flavivirus fibricus which is a toga virus family which is a group b arbovirus remember doctor each of this is an mcq group b arbovirus now there are two cycles of yellow fever one is called forest cycle it is also called sylvian cycle other is called urban cycle which is the man cycle so it is the monkeys instead of humans and forest mosquitoes in forest cycle whereas man the subclinical and clinical cases of men along with aedes aegypti is the urban cycle that is what you need to remember now what is the period of communicability of yellow fever first 3 to 4 days in man and uh, in mosquitoes mosquitoes after the extrinsic period of 8 to 12 days lifelong that is the period of the communicability of the yellow fever is what you need to remember right extrinsic incubation period is means what incubation period means from the entry to clinical symptoms <laughs> so in the extrinsic period is in the mosquito where from the entry to the infective forms creation so that is 8 to 12 days after that mosquito 
until the life of mosquito it will be communicable is what you need to remember single attack of yellow fever provide lifelong immunity so only infants born to the immune mothers of yellow fever they have the antibody protection until they reach 6 months of their life so these are the points that you need to be very sure about so for the yellow fever what is the incubation period 3 to 6 days and under international health regulations which one is taken 3 or 6 6 days is taken the incubation period recognized under international health regulations case fatality rate of yellow fever is very high 80% corona virus uh, 0.05% only we are uh, afraid 80% out of 100 people with yellow fever 80 will die very highly fatal so tomorrow if you are going for honeymoon to mauritius or if you are going to africa compulsory to get a yellow fever vaccine and then show the certificate very important so what type of vaccine is yellow fever live attenuated lyophilized freeze dried vaccine it is a 17d strain grown in the chick embryo and what are the cold chain temperature minus 3 degree minus 30 degree celsius to plus 5 degree celsius is the temperature and how to reconstitute this vaccine doctor this uh, freeze dried vaccine basically you will be using a cold physiological saline to dilute the yellow fever vaccine and after reconstitution you should use within half an hour so it is 0.5 ml dose subcutaneous route at the insertion of deltoid immunity lasts from 7 days till 35 years that means today you took vaccine means tomorrow you can't fly to kenya you have to wait 7 days from then it is valid until 35 years but who validity is what for international travel so it starts from 7 days from 10 days to 10 years please remember is the validity of the yellow fever vaccination is what you need to remember what is the hot mcq of the examiner yellow fever is the only live vaccine that is still administered in pregnancy in pregnancy you don't give live but yellow fever is the only live vaccine that you give in pregnancy if there is a risk of exposure if there is a risk of exposure suddenly somebody is going to africa she has to go to africa she is but pregnant then though she is pregnant we give the live vaccine because if you get yellow fever in africa only 20% chances you will come back to india 80% chances of mortality that's the reason okay now to, what are the two vaccines that should never be given together cholera vaccine and yellow fever vaccine because you are in india you have to take cholera vaccine because you have to go to africa you have to take yellow fever but three weeks gap is required now what is container index number of containers which you have assessed showing breeding of aedes larvae by total number of containers surveyed into 100 will give you container index house index number of houses showing breeding of aedes larvae by total number of houses surveyed then bretus index which is also called this is this index is important aedes egyptiae index number of containers showing breeding of larvae out of the total number of houses surveyed so uh there are three indices you understood the point uh that you need to remember one is container by container other is house by house third is container by house that is called aedes egyptiae index so 
how much distance from the airport the aedes breeding should be it should be breeding free 400 meters half kilometer nearly and aedes aegypti index should be kept less than 1% in the towns where there are airports and seaports now comes chicken area so one of our uh, classmates breakfast chicken evening chicken dinner chicken so we used to call that this guy suffer from chicken area huh? so what is the vector of rural malaria culicifaces is the vector anopheles stephensi is the vector of urban malaria and obviously apartments have overhead tanks there it will breed how do you remember stephensi is urban malaria stephens girls college in delhi is uh, urban right so stephensi is urban malaria fluviatilis anopheles fluviatilis highly anthrophilic but it breed in moving water in the last life it failed to participate in olympic swimming then. so in moving water it will be breeding very romantic right so then anopheles sundaicus breakish water it will be breeding so if you don't get seated need pg at least what you can do you can open practice kill mosquitoes and decide is it sundaicus is it uh, stephensi is it uh, what right uh, where did ronald ross found that plasmodium life cycle in mosquito do you know hyderabad sitting on the hussein sagar tank band so if you are not getting inspiration to read park textbook go to tank band pray to ronald ross what a great soul you are sir huh? i'm not at all getting interested to remember all these things huh? then suddenly one mosquito will come and bite you oh then you start the preparation right next ah, this is another dirty 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 thing in the planet earth i never liked even in intermediate also i did not like it 12th class plasmodium vivax 8 to 17 days falciparum 9 to 14 days malaria for 18 to 40 days and 16 to 18 days is over is what you need to remember okay malaria season july to november what are the difference between malaria and uh, hmm aedes aedes mosquito and uh, malarial mosquito and of lesser you heard the song chitta patta chinukul padtu unte uh, so chellikade sarasana unte that song is there no so in july to november rainy season so in the rainy season when it is beautifully raining you are eating nice samosa ah uh, and the nice coffee is getting ready chai is getting ready that time the uh anopheles mosquito will come and bite you right night also it can come and bite you when you are in a romantic mood with rain outside but aedes is day biter so there is no role for mosquito nets for aedes whereas mosquito nets have a role in anopheles right ha huh. then in malaria who is the definitive host mosquito anopheles mosquito there the sexual cycle occur and intermediate host is man a sexual cycle so please remember doctor what is the cycle in mosquito what is the cycle in human all right so sporozoid center the human is a favorite mcq what form of plasmodium enters the human being sporozoid enters the human being 
what forms the mosquito it enters gametocytes go into mosquito all right that's the reason two types of gametocytes are there female gametocytes male gametocytes right they both go into the mosquito they dance together inside the mosquito they mate with each other they form the zygote zygote become oocyte oocyte become oocyst oocyst become the budding cyst and that forms sporozoite and that goes to the salivary gland tick the mosquito bites and the sporozoite enters into human in the human it goes to the liver and stays dormant as hypnozoite then some of them of oh, one minute some of them turn into hypnozoites one minute now hypnozoites that is the mature liver schizont will be releasing mirozoids mirozoids are the form that infect the erythrocytes inside the erythrocyte it form trophozoite trophozoite forms erythrocytic schizont that will break the erythrocyte and from there the gametocytes male and female are released closing your eyes also you should remember these facts so sporozoite enters go to the liver some of them become hypnozoites and others become liver schizonts from where mirozoites are released mirozoites infect the rbc and inside the rbc they become trophozoite trophozoite become erythrocytic schizont and schizont will release the male and female gametocytes which will enter into the mosquito in the mosquito the male and female gametocytes combine to form the zygote zygote become oocyte oocyte become oocyst oocyst become sporozoite punarapi jaranam punarapi maranam it continues 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 so now comes five to six questions started tomorrow's neat pg exam if the examiner says who is the definitive host of malaria in spite of taking coaching if you answer it as mosquito yeah man my soul will be heaving in the graveyard arre kya ho gaya me on the side of me ronald ross both souls will be heaving in graveyard so please don't do that mosquito definitive host man is the intermediate host please don't forget the bite of the female anopheline mosquito what will it give sporozoites very good then the injection sometimes what happens ready made you will get uh, malaria because the blood containing certain forms will directly come to you trophozoites are there no that is rbc is pregnant inside with the trophozoite directly when blood transfusion is there the trophozoite laden erythrocytes will come into your body that's called transfusion malaria congenital malaria malaria in drug addicts that's called trophozoite induced malaria where are the trophozoites located inside the rbcs that's what you need to remember so what is man called in the transmission of malaria he is a secondary host he is also called intermediate host a sexual cycle host and inside the man what happens is called shizogony is what you need to because erythrocytic schizont will form na isliye shizogony happens inside the man is what you need to remember then female mosquito mein kya hota hai female mosquito is the primary host definitive host sexual cycle sporogony because sporozoites are formed all right so please don't forget this very very basic funda examiner is not going to leave you right doctor now if you look at the human cycle of plasmodium there is a pre erythrocytic schizogony erythrocytic schizogony gametogony exo erythrocytic schizogony mosquito may completion of that gametogony followed by sporogony you'll remember right ha huh. one two points about each of them pre erythrocytic schizogony 
the sporozoites which are injected will go to the liver parenchyma. So there they liberate the merozoites, which are called cryptozoites. During this phase where merozoites are released, there is no clinical manifestation, no pathological stage, blood is sterile. If this guy's blood in the pre erythrocytic physiognomy, if you give to somebody else, they don't get. Only when trophozoites formed inside the RBC, you know, that blood, if you give, you get trophozoid associated malaria. All right, doctor. Then comes erythrocytic shijogani. The parasite inside the RBC, it will translate into trophozoid, shizont, and mirozoid. And the parasitic multiplication. Every time parasite is multiplying inside with trophozoite, shizont, and mirozoid, then there is a clinical attack, spikes of fever, etc., etc. Then gametosin goni. Some of the mirozoite which are developed in the RBC of the spleen and bone marrow, they form gametocytes. Some of them. That's called gametogony. Then exoerythrocytic shijogony means what? Outside RBC. So outside RBC, inside the liver, the persistence of the late tissue phase, hypnozoids, is called exoerythrocytic shijogony. It only happens in vivax and ovale, not in anophilus and, and uh, what else is there? Falciparum. Huh? Uh, sorry. Malaria and plasmodium, malaria and plasmodium falciparum, it doesn't happen. And all the relapses that you see in vivax and ovale are because of this. Exoerythrocytic shijogony associated hypnozoids. And uh, from the liver, whatever the merozoids released are called phenerozoids. So, merozoids can be released from RBCs, merozoids can be released from liver. The, those which are released from the liver are called as phenerozoids. Now, coming to the mosquito. What do you have in mosquito? That gametogeny is completed. This micro gametes will undergo exflagellation, maturation, then fusion to form the zygote. Zygote matures to form. Who can it is what you need to remember. Then inside the mosquito, you have sporogeny. Who can it become woosist? And on 10th day, woosist ruptures and releases the Sporozoids. Sporozoids reach the salivary glands. At this stage, mosquito is capable of transmitting the infection, is what you have to remember. That is the story of malaria. Once more in microbiology, the same story will be there. Some more finer points will be there. Where will you find the sharpness, dots, different, different, uh, how do you recognize on the RBC and all that stuff? Don't worry. 3,000, 2,000 to 3,000 points in microbiology. Khatam, 20, 30 hours of your life destroyed to, in the hands of Dr. Murli, uh, over. Huh? At least you don't end up in doing MD microbiology. Every time, no, you think, why am I reading SPM? Why am I reading? You'll go into depression that time. If I don't read all my life, I have to read SPM. Why am I reading anatomy? If I don't read, I'll get such a big rank. All my life, I have to smell the formalin. Right? Like that, you think about it. While you are reading, other than medicine, surgery, gynops, ortho, pediatrics, dermatology, psychiatry, anesthesia, radiology. Except these subjects. All the remaining, you think if you don't uh, read, you will end up there. But when you are reading ophthalmology or surgery, how will you think? You think like the eminent ophthalmologist in the world, a retina specialist, just got down on the aeroplane. The king of Saudi Arabia is waiting for you. 
and you are going to operate. You are the one who is chosen to operate from India. Think like that. When you are doing similarly, think that you are sitting in a OPD in the obstetrics ward. A pregnant woman came. Think like a clinical case. You are treating. Then the whole clinical subjects, right? Except eight dirty subjects. Anat, physio, bike, micro, pharma, path, forensic. Seven only. Huh? Ah, SPM. Oh my God. Mother of all. The remaining 11 think that you are sitting in the clinic. Remaining eight, you think if I don't spend 20 to 25 hours, maximum 30 hours of my life on this each of these subjects, life long, I will be a faculty in the medical college, right? A boring faculty in the medical college for the James Bond like students. You know what is the paradox about uh, our medical college? You are a young, energetic, highly estrogenic, highly testosteronic, 18 year old, top of your academic levels in recent entrance exam and got into medical college. Who is your first teacher? The one who is in the last of the merit list and took the anatomy, physiology, biochemistry. Who wanted to relax in life, right? With a nice 10 to 3, 10 to 4 job is your first teacher. So that albuminocytologic dissociation will create a huge uh, discrepancy. Right? And uh, within no time you will realize gone are the days of physics, chemistry, biology days. Deko beta Raju, deko, o sebe deko, o apple deko, o girra hai na beta, usko bolte hai Newton's pasla. Kyo beta, utna udas ho sharbat piyo. Achcha pado beta, daddy ne do lakh pe kiya, fitzi mein. Aapko ye coaching center mein join hone ke liye. Suddenly from there, you will come, come into a medical college where they say, guys, you are supposed to read yourself. You need to survive yourself. You know, what is dorsal? What is ventral? What is anterior? What is posterior? Which is synonym of what? By the time you know, exam date will come. Right? Ha. So that's the whole challenge. So doctor, enjoy preparation. What are the pre-eradication era malariometric measures of control? Spleen rate, average enlarged spleen, parasite rate, parasite density index, infight parasite rate, proportional case rate. These are the six parameters. In the eradication era, today we are all trying for control eradication of malaria. Annual parasite index, annual blood examination rate, annual falciparum incidence, slide positivity rate and falciparum rate. Every time we are of all malarias, we are mainly worried about what? Falciparum malaria. Why? Do you know? Other malarias, plasmodiums, they will go and infect only older RBCs. Only falciparum infect both young and old RBCs. Point number one. Second. Why only falciparum can cause cerebral malaria? Because when an RBC is infected with falciparum, it develops some sticky knobs on the surface. When this RBC is passing through the cerebral circulation, these RBCs get adhered to the vascular endothelium. And that causes narrowing of the vessel, decreasing blood flow to the brain, leading to cerebral hypoxia, right? That's the reason stroke-like episodes of transient ischemia. Sometimes some of the falciparum malaria patients, cerebral malaria, they present with stroke, but transient stroke. The moment you start treatment, the RBCs containing those sticky knobs are gone, circulation restores. Right? So, that's the reason cerebral malaria is caused only by falciparum. 
because it is the only one which can produce the sticky nox on the rbcs that it infects you need to remember and what is that typical cerebral malaria biopsy or autopsy feature called as on microscope if you cerebral malaria case if you look through microscope of that brain durix granuloma durix granuloma is a unique feature that is seen in the case of the cerebral malaria is what you need to remember all right now in the eradication era let's talk about each of these indices spleen rate what is the meaning of spleen rate percentage of the children 2 to 10 years of age who is showing splenomegaly and what is the importance of spleen rate the index of endemicity of the malaria in the community these are all mcqs doctor favorite mcqs what is the index of endemicity of the malaria in the community spleen rate parasite rate oh i think today is a very interesting uh, ipl match is there no you do you follow an ipl no the top one and top two are uh, knockout matches there no today good uh we will try to quickly finish the class and run for a nice popcorn uh with a chill beer to watch a match on a big screen right so parasite rate and recently gujarat and lucknow are the unexpected teams yeah ah uh, they are in the first and second position so earlier usmania gandhi are in first position now who should be in the first and second position what bharati what huh vishwa bharati college from karnool should be like gujarat and lucknow team in ipl right and i am the ravi shastri waiting here or kapil dev waiting here <laughs> as your coach so doctor i am very happy to see seven online students very good so every day doctor 6 to 8 pm we discuss 200 points every sunday 9 to 12 is the grand test and 1 to 3 is the discussion live discussion please do come subscribe to this youtube channel and uh, also there are 60000 points 2500 pages of notes that you need to revise and 30000 mcqs i will give you on the wongo app for you to practice and give me 600 hours of your time take 52 grand test with me and participate discussion use another 300 to 400 hours of time to revise what all that we studied here and identify the points that you need to revise in the last moment zarur seat milega but 10 months you should be in this valmiki ashram right and learn the art of archery of hitting the bull's eye and stand in the top 1000 ranks right doctor so next comes infant parasite rate what percentage of infants show parasite in their blood films is called infant parasite rate very good to see ganesh reddy from guntur medical college very good so now doctor what is one common you need to know about infant parasite rate the most sensitive index of the recent malaria transmission infant is born recently no even if he is positive means the malaria is prevalent recently because right so infant parasite rate is most sensitive index of recent malaria transmission in a locality so when do you call there is no malaria transmission in our area you depend upon infant infant parasite rate if the ipr is zero for three consecutive years it is regarded as absence of malaria transmission even though mosquito is there there is no malaria transmission mosquito by itself also cannot do anything there should be sufficient number of people whose blood is containing gametocytes 
Why? Should be available for the anopheles to do anything. If they are not there, it can't do anything. Proportional case rate. If number of clinical malaria cases diagnosed per 100 patients who are coming to hospital and dispensary with fever, out of them, how many are having clinical malaria is called proportional case rate. Then API, it is the most sophisticated measure of malaria incidence in the community. Annual parasite index. What is the annual parasite index? The confirmed cases that occurred in one year divided by population under surveillance into 1,000, 1,000 is called annual parasite index is what you need to remember. Then annual blood examination rate. Your workers, your healthcare workers, how they are going to the homes, doing the uh, slide examination. That shows the operational efficiency of malaria control. So ABER is the index of operational efficiency of malaria control. Slide positivity rate. Number of blood smears positive with parasite divided by total number of blood smears examined into 100 will give you slide positivity rate is what you need to remember. So this is a part of the story. There are some recent guidelines on malaria control, TB control, filariasis control. At a time, I will give you the notes of all that. Right? For now, general microbiological aspects which have not changed every year, we will revise. Lymphatic filariasis, Bucararia bankrupti, Brigia malai, Brigia timori. These are the three organisms that you need to remember when it comes to the uh, lymphatic filariasis. Now, in lymphatic filariasis, what is the definitive host? Definitive host is man. Malaria may sexual reproduction occur in mosquito, uh, whereas uh, reverse in lymphatic filariasis. One of the favorite MCQ examiner of the examiner, filariasis clear. Definitive host is man. Intermediate host is mosquito. Who is the vector for lymphatic filariasis? There is one Brugian filariasis, Bancroftian filariasis. Culex anopheles and ADC is for Bancroftian. Manzonia anopheles are for the Brugian filariasis. Agar Bharat Desh liye to, in India, two favorite MCQs. Bancroftian filariasis is due to Culex quinquifacic, quinqui. Fasciatus, other is called QT, Culex fatigans. Brugian filariasis, Manzonia annuliferous and Manzonia uniformis in India. Now, in the filariasis, what is meant by pre patent period definition? Between the inoculation of infective larvae and the first, in, first appearance of Detectable microfilaria. So larvae should become filaria, microfilaria. The time between the two is called pre-patent period. So what is clinical incubation period? It is between the invasion of infective larvae to clinical manifestations. It takes 8 to 16 months. And uh, when will mosquito becomes infective for filariasis? When the third stage larvae, they migrate to proboscis of the mosquito vector, just like sporozoids. And here, third stage larvae will make mosquito become infective. So what are the stages of filariasis? Asymptomatic amicrofilaremia stage. That is, there are no microfilaria, no clinical symptoms. Then, Asymptomatic but microfilaremia. That means microfilaria are positive but no clinical manifestation. These people act like a carrier and a very important source of infection. Asymptomatic microfilaremia patients. Occult filariasis. There are no clinical manifestations or there are no microfilaria in the blood. 
but there is a hypersensitivity reaction to filarial antigen in them and they start cough 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 tropical pulmonary eosinophilia right so occult filariasis is hypersensitivity to filarial antigen in tropical pulmonary eosinophilia so what is the very common method which is used to identify the lymphatic filariasis doctor mass blood survey so what do you do in that thick film you use 20 cubic millimeter of capillary blood what time do you collect 8:30 pm raat mein to modi ji ka aaj ki raat 12 baje se paise khatam all your money is destroyable right everybody got heart attack with the terror sweat so 8:30 pm to आज की रात बारह बजे तक यू विल डू दलेक्शन एंड वॉट द मोस्ट सेंसिटिव मेथड इफ देर इज अ वेरी लो डेंसिटी माइक्रोफाइलेरिमिया मेम्ब्रेन फिल्टर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन मेथड इज वॉच यू नीड टू रिमेम्बर समटाइम्स इन मॉर्निंग ऑल्सो यू कैन गेट द माइक्रोफाइलेरिया कम आउट नॉट ओनली नाइट हाउ डू यू डू दैट यू गिव डीसी द ड्रग हंड्रेड मिलीग्राम्स ऑफ dc right so dietel carbamazine so once you give that uh there there is a release of uh, uh microfilaria right so that is called dc provocation test so that you can detect even in the morning so how do you identify low density microfilariemia when all other methods fail you will do xeno diagnosis what is the meaning of xeno diagnosis you are suspecting a patient low microfilaria bring the mosquito and uh, allow to feed the patient then that mosquito two weeks later you will uh, dissect it bakwas hai ye sab right entrance ke liye puchte hai kali के लिए नाउ हिमोथेरेपी ऑफ फाइलेरिया डाइटाइल कार्बोमेजिन इफ इट इज बैंक एंड फाइलेरिया दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एमसीक्यू डॉक्टर फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्ट इन द गुड ओल्ड डेज इन जिपर एग्जाम सिक्स मिलीग्राम पर के जी पर डे इंटू ट्वेल्व डेज दट बिकेम सेवेंटी टू एम जी पर के जी बिकेम द टोटल डोसेज दट यू गिव फॉर बैंक एंड फाइलेरिया Three to six mg per kg per day into six to twelve days, if it is Grugian. So these dosages are frequently asked, doctor. At least you remember the golden figure seventy-two, right? Ha, huh. very very important. See, doctor, how we remember? No, that is also very some method you need to build to. remember right if you don't build that uh, method uh, we are gone i'll give you a simple example i am actually teaching maths to my elder boy a uh, second boy i asked him what is 14 minus 8 he is supposed to jump and answer 6 but the kid is struggling to answer 6 then his friend uh, uh, another mercedes bench guy i asked tell me what is 14 minus 8 eighth class fellows 14 minus 8 ting 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 finger i said i'll cut your chop your fingers then i told him one simple trick 11 minus 8 will you remember yes it is 3 dad oh very good So, if eleven minus eight is three, what is twelve minus eight? Four. What is thirteen minus eight? Five. Fourteen minus eight became six. Finish. For lifetime, he can remember. Suppose if you ask, what is uh, 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 what is seventeen uh, minus eight? He need to jump and answer nine. but nobody is in the school actually teaches how to compute mentally 
So you ask him, what is 11 minus 8? It is 3. So 12 minus 8 is 4. 13 minus 8 is 5. 14 minus 8 is 6. 15 minus 8 is 7. 17 minus 8 became eight, uh, 9. So some funny method the kid need to learn. Maths is one dirty subject. Teachers make it dirtier. They'll ask you use your fingers, legs, pseudopodia, uh, and everything to calculate. If not, uh, Lalita, Sunita, or Shailaja will be there, count her uh, heads, and then use them to count. Uh, Similarly, general medicine, cardiology, ECG, everything. There's a very simple way to remember, which you should learn, right? Huh. Do you know how to calculate axis of ECG? Left axis, right axis, deviation. No? How do you calculate? Only two leads you have to look for. Lead one and uh, yeah, we are for two or three, anything. Two is easy. If QRS is positive, looking up in lead one and also in lead two, it is normal axis. If QRS is looking down in lead one and looking up in lead two is right axis deviation. And if the QRS is looking up in lead one and looking down in lead two is considered to be left axis deviation. So how will you remember it? Don't write an intervent diagram and uh, try it. Boy is looking into the stars. Girl is looking into the stars. If both boy and girl are looking into stars, what are they looking? They are looking at Arundhati Nakshatram. They are getting married. Marriage is abnormal or normal? At least it will start normal. So it is normal. Both are looking up. Then Gopi is getting down the steps. Gopika in first year MBBS is getting up the steps. Chupulu Kalisina Shubha Vela. They are right towards each other. That is called right axis deviation. Husband is a busy cardiologist turned that side and sleeping because tomorrow angiograms are there. Wife is neurologist. She has to go to conference and catch morning flight. She turned this side. Between them, what is their pillow? Who will do that? Will grandfather will come and do that? No, no. So they already left that romantic life. They left each other. Right? Simple things that you need to be some way to remember. Right? So please remember that Neat PG is all about 60,000 facts. Out of them, there are 5,000 facts and lists. You have to remember. Develop a method by which you remember. Like red color bag, what does it, uh, what is uh, biomedical waste? Another dirty topic. Huh? Yellow bag, blood bag, blue bag. Nonsense creep. Huh? You open Google, it you can know easily. And after all, tomorrow when you become cardiologist, you are not going to look at bags, but for entrance. Hmm? So, yes, doctor. Now, what is DEC? DEC can kill microfilaria, but DEC cannot kill the infective stage, which is the stage three larvae. DEC can not be able to kill the adult worms. That's the point you need to appreciate. And filariasis is never an explosive epidemic like COVID. Smoldering epidemic in the endemic in the society. So why filariasis control program will be successful? What are the chances? Parasite does not multiply in insect vector. Because if it multiplies an insect vector, what you need to do? You have to kill all insects. Killing insects is not possible in India. It's possible in uh, China. Because they eat insects, they eat cockroaches, they eat earthworms, everything. In India, we breed insects. Right? Huh. And infective larvae do not multiply in human host. That is another advantage. Right? Otherwise, you need to give a larvicidal drug to the entire community. 
to kill the larvae in the humans. And the life cycle of the parasite is quite long, 15 years or more. That's the reason it's possible to control. Then we also use Tata salt, which is an iodized salt, which may generate DEC with all of Pura community ko treat karne ke liye. So, one to four grams DEC per kilo Tata salt is a type of mass treatment, and the duration is for six to nine months. You need to eat DEC medicated salt if you are in the endemic area. So, National Filaria Control Program is in 1955. But now it is a component of National Vector Borne Disease Control Program that makes our life easier because every control program objective should, what is the budget to, what are the successful indices you need to remember. Now only one program you remember, you remember everything. Now, what are the conditions covered under Vector Borne Disease Control Program? Remember this list. Examiner will suddenly put to some unnecessary thing in the middle and create MCQ. Malaria, filaria, says Japanese encephalitis, Kala Azar, Chikungunya, Dengue. Right? Under NBBDCP is what you need to remember. So now, few indices. Malaria, ma sorry, microfilaria rate. Microfilaria are species specific. So, percentage showing microfilaria in the blood in the population of each type of species is called MF rate. Filarial endemicity rate, that is microfilaria in the blood or the disease manifestations. Either of them are counted for filarial endemicity rate. Then microfilarial density, that is intensity of infection. So, per 20 millimeter cube of the blood, how many microfilaria are there? Are the density. Based on the density, you can know how intense is the infection. Similarly, the number of microfilaria, which are positive for the total number of slides examined, I mean, for 100 slides, is average infestation rate, which talks about prevalence of filaria. So, what are the entomological methods to assess the filarial control program? First, vector density for 10-hour man catch. Ask your health worker to catch mosquitoes. Out of them, how many filarial mosquitoes are there? You count. <laughs> that will give you vector density. <laughs> right? Then, out of those mosquitoes, how many are pregnant with infective stage 3 larvae? Do HCG test on them. <laughs> then, Annual biting rate. How many people are bitten? That you, another way. Then, the larval breeding places. You do assessment. Based on that, you can assess the filarial control program is what you need to remember. So, doctor, with that, we come to the conclusion. Is... Um, uh, uh, for the today's wonderful evening, thanks for patient participation, though I'm a little late as usual today also. Uh, 